Ramp prices have been absolutely brutal in the past couple months, but ramp prices may be finally leveling out. Is there hope for ramp prices in 2026? And what does that mean for PC gamers? Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. We're gonna go through current ramp prices and news to help you navigate RAM again. If you get value out of this video, please give it a like and of course subscribe for more cool PC content. Let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows licenses and that terrible activate Windows watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key and get a Windows 11 OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 30% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code and boom, Windows is fully licensed for a crazy low price. And they have Microsoft Office licenses too. Use the links in the video description. So how do we get here? Well, if you've been watching hardware news, you know that RAM prices have absolutely exploded since October, 2025, when OpenAI signed deals with two of the three global RAM suppliers, Samsung and SK Hynix. Now that deal gave OpenAI nearly 40% of global RAM production, 40% to fill their AI data centers, where OpenAI is currently on the hook for over a trillion dollars in compute expansion. That is trillion with a T. So this of course started a huge domino effect that essentially crashed the RAM market. Other AI hyperscalers flush with hundreds of billions in deals to massively expand their own AI data centers, they panic too. They look to lock up their own RAM supplies under contract. OEMs that make everything from laptops to smartphones to desktop PCs, pretty much any device that needs RAM, they also panic bought RAM for their needs often at increasingly inflated prices. As usual, the consumers in the PC enthusiast space, we were the last in line, watching RAM prices skyrocket almost daily. And of course, it all happened at the height of the consumer buying season from October Prime Day all the way through Black Friday and beyond, making everything 10 times worse for consumers. Now, of course, some people are saying this might be the end of consumer electronics, let alone PC and even console gaming. Now, companies like Dell, CyberPower, Framework, and others, they've all announced price increases. And for PC gamers, we've even seen price increases floated for graphics cards due to increased VRAM pricing, along obviously with the higher RAM prices that we're paying right now. But there is an interesting thing that's happening right now. Let's take a look. Around the first week of December, so about a week after Cyber Monday, look what happened. The Prices are flattening out, and this is for DDR5 6,000 32 gigabyte kits. Let's take a look at 5,600 RAM. Similar kind of story here that's it's definitely flattening out. Let's look at DDR4 RAM really quickly. This is for a 32 gigabyte kit of 3,200 stuff. Again, completely flattening out here since that blue line again is Black Friday. Black Friday is that blue line. And then if we look at 16 gigabyte kits, although we're at the kind of the top of the graph here, we are seeing similar things in DDR4 as well. And let's take a look at a couple of kits. So this is our RAM buying guide, November 14th, basically just before Black Friday. I was finding kits for DDR5 6000 CL30 or tighter timing, so basically the kind of best of the best RAM out there that we've been recommending for about $250. And at the time, this Corsair Vengeance kits was one of the cheapest one of them out there. So if now we just look at kind of similarly cheap kits that are DDR5 6000 CL30 or better timing, it's now Patriot and V-Color kits that are a little bit cheaper, but they're about 320. Uh, this one with a promo code is 329 or $330, I should say, to $300. $50 is kind of where you're going to find those kits right now. So prices have come up another $70 to $100 in that time. And that was part of that explosion that we saw. However, I've noticed recently these kits are not really budging in price the way they were like changing literally three times a day during the height of the rocket ship. Looking at other DDR5 kits that have looser timings that's still 6,000 speed that we're looking at. And as we look at in the benchmarks, basically just fine. We were finding kits for just under $200 in November, so about a month and a half later, what do we have here? I can find some Crucial kits right now. I know, LOL, Crucial, right? DDR5 6400 CL38, which is essentially 6000 CL36 RAM, $292 right now over at Best Buy, and you can actually either pick these up or they'll ship them to you. V-Color's got a kit over at Newegg right now for $319. And in fact, if we look at a lot of these kits right now, not that different in terms of the pricing from DDR5 6000 CL30. So I'm almost like, why wouldn't you just get the other stuff? The difference, I guess, is you get the brand name RAM, like G-Skill Rip Jaws and stuff like that. The other big difference that's changed right now 
is we've got deals like this now for $489 over at Newegg where they're taking super high-end motherboards, liquid coolers, and then they're bundling together with RAM and they're basically almost giving you the motherboard and the cooler, I don't wanna say for free, but on insane discounts to what they were priced out there. So this one, for instance, you get the ASRock X870E Nova with it. This is if you want an ASRock board, obviously, you get a 32 gigabyte kit of 6400. I think this is CL36 RAM. This V color, it's RGB. And then you get a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler and all that together, if you just price these individually, obviously you'd be like 700 or $800. Instead you get it for 489, which basically makes the RAM like 200-ish dollars for this. Here's another one I posted yesterday. Unfortunately, it sold out, probably my fault, where you got G-Skill RAM along with a super high-end motherboard, the Asus Strix X870E-H. Now that motherboard sold for $400 for most of the year. Recently, they have slashed the motherboard price. That is one thing that's going on. All the other PC components are getting massive discounts because they're just not selling them right now. So this got a $150 discount. And on top of that, they were giving you $140 combo savings. So basically for almost the price of what the motherboard used to cost, they were giving a RAM kit for about $69, which was crazy. And this is probably why this one is sold out right now. But Newegg is refreshing these on a regular basis as they sell out. Then if we take a look at some 16 gigabyte kits, so two by eight gigabyte kits, DDR5, this was 6,000, I believe it's like CL38. And I was like, hey, $97, 16 gigs is still enough, but there are some future upgradability problems because four sticks of DDR5 is really hard to run for most memory controllers. It's really difficult. But let's take a look at what prices might be now because it was at about $100 for these. Now, I've thrown in some single sticks. Now, the idea here is you buy one stick and then in the future, you buy that exact same stick and possibly you can get the two of them to run together. You don't lose that much performance for DDR5. DDR4, you lose quite a bit. You can pick up a single stick DDR5 6000 CL30 for $169 right now. It's a Patriot one. The cheapest is this DDR5. This is 5200 CL40, which is really, really kind of cutting the edge there. $169, though, if you want that. And then, of course, looking at that same kit that we just had, there's uh, it's basically $219. And this is one that I feel like goes up every couple of days is the 16 gigabyte kits. Cause now they have gone up, obviously that was formerly a slightly under hundred. Let's just call it hundred bucks. It's basically gone up a, 120%. And then really quickly, we were finding DDR4 32 gigabyte kits for about $120 to $150 previously, and 16 gigabyte kits for about $75 to $100. Let's just take a look at what they are now. There's actually been a little bit of rubber banding, I would say, in terms of the price of some of these DDR4 kits, where they've actually popped up to quite a higher amount. For instance, this silicon power kit here in the bottom right-hand corner, $199 right now. I think just like yesterday, it was $209 or a couple days ago it was $209. I'll have to double check that, but it looks like a couple of these kits have come back under 200. Not only that, but some of these kits have come back into stock that had just hadn't existed for a while. So that's kind of interesting as well. Then if we look at 16 gigabyte kits, unfortunately, most of them are now over a hundred bucks, quite a bit, $107 here for this one. So it, it, you do get an advantage of going to 32 gigabytes. You basically save, you know, quite a bit of money over having to double one of these kits instead. So there is a price advantage there, but unfortunately 16 gigabyte kits have really taken the face. So where do RAM prices go in 2026? Well, I'm taking a look here at the spot price for DDR5 and DDR4 RAM, basically on DRAM exchange. And I don't wanna get into the prices. I think they have this really interesting note right here in red. Fortunately, it does not scale very well with their website. DRAM exchange do something about that. So I put it here in a Google doc and I have underlined what I think is a key passage. They're saying recent spot market prices increases have exceeded market expectations. So prices have gone up more than they expected. They're saying it's primarily due by continued supply tightening. However, the magnitude of price movements may have exceeded what fundamentals alone would justify. What does that mean in like regular person talk? The price movement, the in price increase does not seem to be justified by only looking at supply and demand. There are other things going on there potentially like price gouging by the big memory makers, especially in a panic buying environment where they're just taking advantage of people right now. And they're also thinking about whether or not the spot market price, this is the rest of the statement, is actually justified given that a lot of the RAM is purchased under contract. So there may be a big difference between the spot market price for individual integrated circuits that go on to become a, a memory module and the finished products you're seeing because the RAM's actually purchased under contract pricing, which is significantly better. 
So basically what they're saying is, yeah, these spot prices, they seem a little sus, basically. Then of course, we've got a lot of people in the industry are now questioning whether or not these hyperscaler AI companies can even complete these data center buildouts in the time schedules that they've laid out for themselves under which they would have to purchase and use all of this RAM, given all the challenges to standing up physical buildings and infrastructure, including the massive amount of power that they need, as he cites here, is one of the major contributors to data center delays right now. They just can't get enough power online to run them. How fragile the supply chain. Oracle has reportedly delayed several new open AI data centers because of shortages of materials and labor by potentially a year or more. And of course, they have a massive cash flow problem. I'm just talking about open AI, but a lot of these other companies do as well. The elasticity of the money that they're stretching to create this bubble may be coming to an end in some terms. We may see that they have basically bit off more than they can chew in terms of standing up these data centers on the timelines that they've said, which would basically impact the amount of RAM that they can actually use regardless of what they're contracted for. All right, so where do RAM prices go in 2026? Let's play everyone's favorite game. Should you buy now or should you wait? Listen, it's tough to say. Right now, at least, prices seem to be hitting some kind of plateau. Fingers crossed that that continues and it's not just a momentary lull because Black Friday and the holiday shopping period are over right now. Though I do think that that occurring at this kind of perfect storm moment with the panic buying by the AI hyperscalers and the OEMs and all the big players out there kicked off by OpenAI, initially signing that contract in October, despite the fact that they do not seem to be in a position to execute on actually building these data centers out on the extremely tight and aggressive timelines that they've laid out. If you just look at their various documents out there, acquiring 40% of the world's RAM supply. So if they're not able to use that, then that RAM is gonna go somewhere. That RAM is gonna be produced. It's gonna potentially go somewhere sold to other players out there who will obviously buy it for, yes, higher prices than we were paying a, a couple of months ago, but it will be interesting to see. Now, on the other side of that, Prices could just continue to explode. We could just be in a momentary lull. I don't wanna tell you that everything's gonna be okay here. We're all just fine. We are still in a kind of crazy period. And I would say if you are somebody who can afford to buy a $300 kit and you need the RAM, go ahead and buy it. If you need a new PC build, go to Newegg and take advantage of some of those combo deals if you're able to. I'd say do that. Now, it might be, three or six months from now, those RAM kits are actually cheaper than they are today and you bought at the high point. But it's also just as likely that those RAM kits will be, you know, even more expensive than they are. And not only will you pay more for them in the future, then you'll lose out on all this time that you could have had them right now. So let's go budget by budget. At the low end, I honestly, I'd go with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. If you can get into a DDR4 RAM kit, really where I would be looking right now, you're got about $100 for the RAM. You're basically paying like 2018 or 2019 uh, RAM prices for it. It's not the end of the world. It's not what you'd want to do, but I would do that. For those folks in the middle, I think you were the most impacted because you would like to be on a DDR5 platform and the cost goes up pretty significantly. So if you can't afford to get those combo deals or even just buy a $289 or how much that crucial kit was, something like that, that's probably what I would do. At the high end, I'm not seeing that much of an impact, especially if you can take you know, that combo deal, unless you need more than 32 gigs of RAM. But if you're putting together like a 9800X3D or whatever they launched at CES, you know, along with a super high-end GPU, you're talking about maybe another 10% of your overall build cost. It's not gonna impact you as much as it is other people. You probably got a green light no matter what. Hey, I'm gonna go ahead and link some of the RAM deals that I'm finding right now down in the video description. Uh, if you want a full walkthrough of what RAM you should even be looking at right now, go ahead and check out the, our earlier November video. I'll leave that linked in the video description. We go through the benchmarks and like what the performance differences is. And of course, if you got value out of this video, please give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy who slept through the whole thing right here. And let me know if you want me to do this every month like we do with GPUs and CPUs right now, kind of walk through, maybe we'll bring a spreadsheet into this at some point. Let me know down in the comments and we'll catch you on the next one.